What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I have my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Glen Turret 12. Stick around. Okay, so it's the Glen Turret 12 today. I know there are plenty of you out there who have been waiting on this one and a lot of noise has been made about this whiskey. I think the 12 in particular is kind of like the poster child for the updated Glen Turret line. Uh, Glen Turret came out with a new line in 2020 and people are saying it is a huge step up from the older stuff. Our 12 year old here is an annual release. The one I've got is the 2021. Um, apparently the quality and the flavors do kind of shift year to year, uh, which makes sense. But what I heard about the 2021 is that it's the best one. I think I heard that, maybe. Somebody, somebody said something about this. Either way, I'm not gonna be able to contextualize this stuff against the others. Uh, the others being the 2020 Maiden release, there's the 2022 release. I don't think we have a 2023 yet. Uh, regardless, I haven't had any of them, so I'll just be looking at this stuff for what it is. Shockingly, our 2021 release here was released in 2021. Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? Uh, it's got a reputation of being this kind of like dirty, old school style of sherry which I like, and it's also got a reputation of being something of a sherry bomb, which I like sometimes. Now, this is not only the first Glen Turret 12 I've ever had, it's not only the first Glen Turret from the new line I've ever had, it's just the first Glen Turret I've ever owned. Now, I've tried Glen Turrets before, like at whiskey shows, maybe at friends' houses, I've had drams of it, but I've never had a full bottle to myself. And I wasn't really interested until they came out with a new line, the new line, unfortunately, is still not available in Taiwan, at least not that I've seen. So I had to pick this one up while I was traveling. Now, this is one I was really excited to try. I'd heard so much about it. There was a fair amount of hype about this stuff back when it first came out and back in 2021. Might be dying down a little bit now, so I'm late for the party. Regardless, uh, bloggers, vloggers, reviewers, everyone seems to love this stuff. It is expensive for a 12 year old, but the general consensus is the quality justifies the price. Obviously, we'll touch on that later when we talk about value. Um, yeah, let's jump in. Let's find out where I land on this stuff. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Good specs here, 46% non-chill filter, natural color. I think the older releases, or at least most of the older releases were none of those things. So, good. Okay, so we're clearly going all in on the Art Deco look. Obviously, a lot of time and money was spent on the revamp, and I think it looks good. I think it's a huge step up from whatever that was. Um, it's distinctive. It's not my favorite de design in the world, but it looks cool, and I'm gonna give it four out of five for presentation. This does not say non-chill filtered or natural color anywhere on the bottle. It does on the box over there. Uh, we have some tasting notes down here. By hand and heart since 1763. We've got traditional skills, we've got enduring wisdom, we've got contemporary masters. Yeah, cool. On the nose, yes, this is one of those dirty, old school sherry whiskeys. It is earthy, it is leathery, it is funky. We get this kind of like slightly lactic fermented note. There's cinnamon, apple cinnamon, chili, Christmas cake, ginger. We definitely get some of that spice from the European oak. There's blackberries, there's elderberries. This is dark and complex. On the palette and finish, we get a spicy arrival. This is dry, we get lots of dark berries. It's jammy, but it's not too sweet. We have leather notes in here, like old leather armchairs. So are you saying you eat armchairs, Jeff? Yes, I do. I eat armchairs. There's spicy ginger in here, there's herbs, there's bitter herbs, stuff like ginkgo, there's dirt. So you eat dirt too? Yep, dirt too, super good. There's loads of oak spice, there's toasted oak, there's smoked applewood cheddar, that's a fun one. Uh, it's a medium to long finish. All right, so this does live up to its reputation. Having heard so much about it, yeah, it does fit the bill. This is a dirty, funky type of sherry. It definitely doesn't taste like this over-engineered, mass-marketed sherry 12-year-old. Uh, it's very it's very much for the enthusiasts. It tastes very enthusiast-y. Yeah, enthusiast-y. 
if we want to contextualize our flavors here, I'd say this is Edradour Caledonia meets an unpeated sherry Legic meets Glen Farquhar's 15. So again, old school, dirty. I'm going to keep using those descriptors here. Uh, it's got plenty of complexity. You can spend plenty of time like pulling out the flavors. We have a lot of fruitiness in here, but it's never anywhere close to being too sweet. It's dark and brooding, it's dry, it's leathery. Again, it's really one for the enthusiasts. Like, I think if you're a whiskey enthusiast and you're not totally sherry averse, you're legally obliged to like this stuff. You, you don't have a choice. And guess what? I like it. I think this is a really good whiskey. Um, I might be a little bit less enthusiastic than some people out there, uh, and I can't really pinpoint why because Again, I enjoy the whiskey. I like the spiciness in here. I like the restrained sweetness. It's one of those ones on paper I should be head over heels with. Really, this is a whiskey I should be totally in love with. And I do really, really like it, but I don't know. It's just like there's something holding me back. Um, it might be the fact that I haven't had much Glen Turret and when I have something like this, it doesn't really help me grasp the Glen Turret house style, the Glen Turret flavor. It is a lot of active casks in here. And listen, I always say I don't want the cast to completely overwhelm the distillate. I don't think that happened here. We do get a lot of funk from the distillate. And beyond all that, even if this was a complete and total sherry bomb, I do think there's a time and place for sherry bombs, even though it's not my favorite style. You know, sometimes they just fit the mood, uh, especially if the casts have imparted great flavors and the quality's there. And the quality is there, so I don't I don't know what I'm complaining about. That's that's not the problem. That's not the problem. Maybe the issue is this stuff reminds me quite a bit of Edradour Caledonia. Now, don't get me wrong, Edradour Caledonia is a fantastic whiskey. In fact, when I first tried it, I absolutely fell in love and I bought two more bottles right then and there. And then I ended up drinking those three bottles back to back. And I think I kind of burnt out on the flavors. I haven't had much Caledonia since those three bottles. Um, and that's, that's nobody's fault but mine. But yeah, this one does kind of remind me of Caledonia. Again, Caledonia is a great whiskey. I would say that one is a little bit more on the funky lactic side. This one is more on the spicy oaky side, but there are some parallels there. Um, yeah, and I feel like back in the day, if you rewind like two or three years, I probably would have given this one like an 89 or a 90. Nowadays, I'm gonna land on 87 for this one. It is a fantastic whiskey and I feel like the quality is there. It's just something holding me back personally from really, really falling in love here. Still fantastic. And if you're a Sherry Bomb lover, it's a must. I guess at the end of the day, this one's just a little bit too brooding for me. And I think that that affects the reachability. Like this is a whiskey that I do enjoy and I think is fantastic, but it's not something I find myself coming back to as much as I would have thought that I would have. Would have thought that I would have. Was that English? Anyway, yeah, my reservations here speak more to my own personal preferences than they do the whiskey's quality. This is an incredible whiskey and it is a whiskey you should check out. Now let's talk about value. So is this worth the money? Uh, and I would say, yes, it is. The quality is there. This is a whiskey I would buy again. I'm not rushed to go out and buy it as soon as this one's done, but I would pick this whiskey up again. Now it's not sold here in Taiwan, but the amount that I paid for it is on par for with what I would pay for Caledonia here. Uh, I actually prefer this to the Caledonia. I'm sure if you go back and check out my old review of Caledonia, I scored it higher. I'm trying to sort of like bring down my scores a little bit. I get too enthusiastic sometimes. This is a better whiskey in my opinion. Um, and it's worth the money. So it's very much, if you like your old school sherry stuff and if you're an enthusiast, it's not to be missed. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Always appreciated. I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Glen Turret 12 here? Have you tried anything else from the new updated range? What were your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next. And I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.